All right, welcome back to Intro to 3D Modeling. Today we're going to cover the relationship between a program called Substance Painter from Adobe and Maya. So, um, you know, Maya falls short a little bit on the ability to interactively paint unique surface textures right onto your models. You know, uh, Autodesk has a platform called Mudbox, but I have found it, to, first of all, not be that great of a um, piece of software and also have a lot of issues moving files back and forth between Mudbox and Maya. Um, so I think Substance has a much bigger community too and as you can see from the demo video you're seeing right now it allows you to paint color, um, bump map textures, displacement map textures, grunges, all sorts of interesting things right onto the surface. It has a bunch of these like smart textures uh, that have all these built-in features into it. And there's a huge community here of Substance uh, Share Platform where you can go and download for free all of these different smart materials or different brush types or different shaders, um, material types. There's 1,600 there, 800 in the next. Everything you can think of. And so it's a great community and then you can modify these to your heart's content, load them into Substance and apply them to your models. And, uh, you know, you can download this all for free, which is really cool. As a student, you can get uh, Substance Painter as well as Substance Alchemist and Designer, which are other kind of um, sister softwares that allow you to design your own materials and create materials from photographs. Um, so it's a really great platform. You can come here, you can sign up and get your free license and uh, unleash the power that Substance has, um, which is pretty cool. And there's a great guide here for how to um, render, how to like take a model from Maya, bring it into Substance, paint it, and then bring it back in so you can still render it in Arnold. So we're going to kind of go over this today and get this, this particular workflow going. And there's more workflows out there. You'll find other ways people have used Substance Painter. This is just the one that I have found to be the easiest to use. All right, excuse me for a quick sip there. And... Let's take a look. So I'm going to go back to Arnold. I'm just going to quick create a quick little model. I'm just going to extrude something out really quick. Um, it's nothing too fancy here. We'll just call this a you know a strange little sculpture that I'm creating. So get the surface here and I'm going to do some extrusions. I'm going to keep it simple. Do a little inner extrude. Oop. There we go. A little space plant of some sort. I don't know what the heck I'm making here, but some some funny little sculpture that's going to show us um, some of the features of what we can do inside of Substance Painter. So I'm just going to expand that base out a little bit. There we go. All right, cool. This will work. So I'm going to go ahead and... Uh, oop. Let me go back to object mode. First thing I'm going to do is um, I'm just going to go ahead and save this. So let's just call this sculpture. I'm going to put it on my desktop. And I'm going to go ahead and apply a new material. And I'm going to do an uh, AI standard surface. And uh, and then I'm going to apply UV mapping. You know, you want to spend some time with your UV mapping, particularly with our different organic forms and shapes and characters and things like that. Uh, since this is just such a rectilinear object, I'm just going to do automatic for right now. And that should do a pretty good job um, just giving me a base UV mapping. But you want a base UV mapping so that everything lines up properly when you bring it back into Maya. Um, and now that I have this, I'm going to save one more time. I'm going to go ahead and delete my history. Um, just so I can just see my AI standard surface. There it is, I'm good to go. And uh, I'm gonna go ahead and export this as an FBX. So unfortunately Maya doesn't open up, like Maya files don't open up directly in Substance, but FBX and OBJ files do. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, export the selection here. And I'm gonna choose from here FBX, there's the OBJ as well. If those aren't in there, make sure they're active, that those exporters are active in your plugins. Uh, so I'm gonna call this sculpture again. I'm going to put this on my desktop. Whoop. Scroll wheels non-functional. There we go. All right. And there it is. You can see on my desktop now I have sculpture.mb and .fbx. So I'm going to go ahead and hide Maya. And let's open up Substance. Now I've already got it all installed and licensed and everything like that. 
All right, so first thing that I want to do is go to File and New. And this is where you select your FBX file. So I'm going to go ahead and click Select. And there it is on my desktop sculpture. And you can also choose your document resolution. I'm going to go with 2048. If you're doing this for gaming or Unity or VR or something, you might want to go with a lower res. Um, but I'm going to go with 2048. That's fine. And I'm going to leave everything else by default. And here we go. Here's my um, crazy little sculpture. And you can see it. You can see my basic rectilinear uh, UV mapping there on the right. And we are pretty good to go. So down here at the bottom, we have all these different things to work with. We've got various materials that we can paint with. We've got brushes. So I'm going to give you a quick overview, but by no means am I going to show you everything in here. Um, so and then over on the right, we have a layers system as well as like a texture set list. So I only had the one texture in there, the AI standard surface. So you can see it up here in the top right. I have these various layers here. I could add multiple layers if I want, but I could just choose like the aluminum here. And I have brush controls up here at the top. I could increase the size of this and I could just paint that crazy gold aluminum all over this and, um, you know, have something pretty interesting. I'm going to undo that. I could also, you know, scale up and just apply it to the top there. Undo that a little bit. Oh, that was a lot of undos to do. And I can control the flow of that. If I turn that down, it only does it a little bit or I can get to like 50%. Um, I'm going to leave these at 100% for right now. Um, and the stroke capacity and spacing. So, you know, I can have big spaces between them if I drag it. Um, or, you know, just a little bit kind of stutters, a little bit more, blah, blah, blah. You get the, you get the point. Um, so I'm going to turn my spacing back down and then I can choose different brushes however I want. You know, if I want to, I could, you know, and I can zoom way in on this. It's standard pan controls just like Maya. So holding option down, I can pan, middle button, I can, um, I'm sorry, I, that was rotating my viewport. Middle button is panning and then scroll wheel to zoom in and out. So, you know, I could paint wood onto the surface of this. All sorts of interesting things that you can do. So those are the paint tools. And I can add multiple layers over here. If I hit this paintbrush, you know, on one I could have wood. And then on the next one, the next layer, I could put metal. And then, you know, I could play around with the opacity of the metal so that the wood comes through. Or I could do uh, layer styles and multiply or subtract one off of the other. This is where it gets really fun. It's like, you know, bringing the power of Photoshop into what you're doing. Um, or I could turn that layer off and just stay with the wood, right? Um, so lots of possibilities there. I'm going to turn both those off and I want to show you smart materials as well. These ones are your ones you can just like drag on and it will cover the whole object, which is pretty cool. Oh, I thought I did. Well, not sure why it's not doing that. Let's try another one. There we go. That one wasn't working for some reason, but that one's fine. So that's kind of like a glass, some kind of metal glass one that's kind of reflective. Undo that one. Um, here's aluminum, kind of a red aluminum. And these just have like, you know, some more dynamic layered shader systems built into them instead of just like the one surface. Uh, but I can drag these to the bottom and I could still have stuff on top of them if I wanted to, you know. So um, I'm going to go ahead and delete a couple of these layers and create a new one on top of it. And then say if I like this red uh, aluminum, I could still paint something on top of it. So I could come in here and grab like um, steel ruined and still paint that. Oh, I grabbed the wrong one. Materials here. And let's grab uh, steel. Uh, yeah, let's grab that one. Let's see how that looks. And I could still paint these right onto the top of it. You know, maybe I want to take my flow down a little bit. So I could have a mix of different materials. And again, I could bleed that back a little bit if I wanted to. There's lots of possibilities, right? And um, not only that, but you can also choose different brushes. So each of these brushes, I could get kind of like this spider web feel of the steel um, that I bring in. Let me bring that flow back up. And I could just create little like spider webs of steel that are coming down into that area, which is really kind of neat, right? So this is where you can really start to get some cool textures and surfaces built in to what you're doing. 
and let's see what else can I add here for you um, there's a lot more I'm just gonna maneuver around let's try um, ooh, let's try these little guys and then I'm gonna try a different material I'm gonna use kind of a concrete one up here and let's bring the size of that brush down there we go and I can kind of paint this stuff right onto the top of it so you can have a lot of fun here you can really play around you can bring in lots of different patterns I could go to the bottom of it here again I would probably put all these on their own layers I've just been lazy here and doing it on one uh, but if I bring this in and then bring my brush back and I scroll to the top I'll go with a standard soft brush again and I'll increase its size a little bit and then I could bring in this like diamond metal pattern just for the bottom give it a little bit of grip which is kind of cool. So there's lots to play around with. There's these skin materials for creatures. There's these hard surface objects, various textures, um, procedurals, grunges, alpha channel stuff that you can bring in. There's so much. So you can really get to know that's everything if you bring it all in. And then, like I said, you can add materials as well. You can load things in, which is kind of cool. Um, you can just drag them in when you download them from um, that online site that I showed you. So lots to play around with. But I think this is something we can we can go ahead and output this now so I think this looks pretty cool so how do I get this back to Maya well now I'm gonna go to file and I'm gonna go to export textures and I am going to go ahead and cl click here first to decide where I'm gonna save it so I'm gonna go to my desktop create a new folder and call this um, let's call this substance textures and create so that's where I know they're going to go. Otherwise, they'll go to like a default folder. And then the big one is the output template here. We want to choose and scroll down a little bit and choose the Arnold AI standard surface. And this is going to give us everything we need to rebuild this as an AI standard surface. And that's about it. I'm going to leave everything at default and I'm going to go ahead and export. You can see it just exported a base color, a metalness, a roughness, a normal, and a height. It will also do a transparency if you happen to do something like a transparent glass. But we didn't, so that's what we got. So I'm going to go ahead and hide that. And um, I want to show you there's this great guide, uh, like I said, Substance Guide to Rendering in Arnold. And this really is like the key to show you how all these files are going to rebuild as an AI standard surface. So like the base color file that it just created, if I open this up, this is the folder, you'll see there's a base color. That's going to be kind of like your base color texture file, roughness, we'll go into specular and roughness in the AI standard surface, metallic, we'll go to base metalness. So this is what we're going to use as our guide. So I'm going to move this off to the side. Let me bring up Maya. All right, now we're going to choose here, get our AI standard surface and start loading these in. So over here on the right, I'm going to go to my color here under base and let's load the first one. So file and then let's go look for it on my desktop and there's my substance texture files and here it is base color and load now we can't see it so I gotta turn on hardware texturing and there we go we can start to see the colors are coming in exactly mapped where we wanted them to right there's the texture on the bottom there's the red there's those little bits on the top but there's more to give it the full color and look that we're looking for right so Let's, I'm going to use this button to back back out. AI standard surface. Next thing we're going to do is metalness. This definitely has some metal in it. Go to file and then look for that. There's the metalness file and open that. It's looking weird, but don't worry. It's going to come back and look cool. Um, so I'm going to back back out. And then we're going to go to um, uh, roughness under specular next. Let's go ahead and load that. And there's the roughness file and we're gonna back back out and then we're gonna go and put in if you remember on here under um, normal file that it created we want to go to bump map but we also want to use this setting called the tangent space normals okay so let me go into here and let me go down to geometry this is where you can find your bump map stuff and I'm gonna load here and load a file and use as tangent space normals and then we're going to load that file in and here it is and there's the normal file now it's getting some of that texture to it which is cool and 
Last but not least, the displacement map. So let's grab this guy again, AI Standard Surface. And to get the displacement map, click on this button, and here's the displacement material for Arnold. We click on that, File, and the displacement map settings have to be tweaked sometimes. Um, but this is the height file. So we're going to go ahead and grab that. And now we're going to go to Arnold and take a look and see what this looks like. I'm going to throw a light into the scene. And hopefully this comes back looking the way we're hoping it to look. Yay! Not too bad. Now the displacement map I think did mess with it a little bit, but not too much. But as you can see, you know, in our viewport, you don't always see everything that's in Arnold, but pretty neat stuff, right? Now let's go and just take a look at that displacement map real quick. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and click on my model here and pull in the AI standard surface and go to displacement and um, you know what, actually an easier way to get to this is through your Hypershade. So I'm gonna go to Hypershade here and just add this to my scene and I'm gonna unfold it so you can kind of see the whole network of what's going on there. And then I wanna make sure I add the displacement as well. And now we can see the displacement here. And if I take this, I can go ahead and reduce the amount it displaces. I'm gonna go to like 0.5. And that's just a little, oh, I guess I didn't get that. Let's try that again, point. Oh, it's scale. Sorry, 0.5. There we go. See how like one like was like swelling the whole model and kind of messing with it? Because displacement maps actually displace the surface, right? So we want to go to less than that. I'm going to go to like point, um, actually like 0.3. Let's go to that. And that's a little bit better. I'm still getting the displacement map, um, but I'm not getting it like completely messed up. But pretty cool. You can go from, you know, bringing in all those neat textures. You know, obviously, if I, I put some better lighting in here, I would have a whole lot more going on, more shininess. I just threw in like the sky dome. Um, but pretty cool textures you can mess around with. I've got my distressed metal. I've got this kind of little features up here on the top. I've got these little veins on the bottom, and I've got my checker pattern down here. So pretty cool process uh, for moving between Substance and Arnold. And if you have any trouble, um, let me know. And hopefully this just adds a whole new set of tools for you to be able to um, really add a lot of surface detail and texture and shader detail to your models and to your scenes. All right, thanks for tuning in.